Hello class, uh, welcome to the first session for endocrine pathology. We are going to discuss uh, five slides for today uh, for this session. This is slide 45, that's parathyroid hyperplasia. And then we have uh, 181, pituitary adenoma. 164, diffuse hyperplasia. And uh, 165, adrenocortical adenoma and 167 adrenocortical carcinoma okay so let's start with slide 45 and this is parathyroid hyperplasia sorry i have to close this one okay so parathyroid hyperplasia uh, can be primary primary okay so it's a uh, primary caused by primary hyperparathyroidism like the presence of a sporadic case or it can be part of men syndrome or it can be secondary caused by secondary hyperparathyroidism wherein there would be hypocalcemia and the most common cause for this would be chronic renal failure okay so there are a total of four parathyroid glands they are paired uh, on each side and if you remember histology there are two cells that would be uh, seen in the parathyroid gland, namely the chief cell or the principal cell, and then we have the oxyphil cell. So the, the chief cells or the principal cells are the ones that would be seen in parathyroid hyperplasia to be increased in number. And uh, these this are characterized by having uniform round nuclei that is dark with abundant clear cytoplasm they are sometimes called as water clear cell so they, sometimes they would call this one as a water clear cell hyperplasia so these cells are the ones responsible for secretion of parathyroid hormone so in sporadic cases we would see hypercalcemia in our patients that are asymptomatic or in the case of chronic renal failure there would be hypocalcemia and it will cause the hyperplasia of the parathyroid gland okay so uh, how do we identify patients okay number one if they are symptomatic we look at the uh, blood chemistry we look into the calcium levels and they are elevated and for those who have sustained history of hypercalcemia they can present with uh, the painful bones caused by osteodystrophy and then we also have renal stones because of the presence of of calcium oxalate formation and then we have abdominal groans which is gi disturbance and psychic moans that is due to weakness and fatigue okay so we look at the slide you would see the presence of those water clear cells Okay, they are monotonous in appearance uh, uh, in some cases you would see the presence of the larger oxyphil cells okay. so these are the oxyphil cells okay. so these cells are uh, larger than the uh, chief cells they possess uh, pink or acidophilic or acinophilic cytoplasm okay so they do not have uh, a secretory function so next we have um 181 this is pituitary adenoma okay so where do we see the pituitary gland it's located in the supracellar area the cella torsica and it, this particular uh Neoplasm is seen most commonly in adults. So the, the age bracket would be 35 to 60 years old. And it is sporadic in 95% of cases with G-protein mutation. The 5% of cases, they are inherited or they are familial with uh, MEN1, uh, CDKN1B, PRKAR1A, uh, and AIP mutation okay so with regards to the size it can be 
less than 1 cm, we call it as microadenoma. Or it can be more than 1 cm, we call it as a macroadenoma. They are uh, soft, well circumscribed, and 70% of it will be encapsulated. Okay, so uh, majority of the problems that we have with pituitary adenoma would be whether or not it is functional, so it would be dependent on the cells that are proliferating, like if it's a somatotroph, a lactotroph, uh, thyrotroph, so it depends really on the cell type that would be present in the adenoma. And uh, the manifestations of these patients are mainly associated with the size. Like if it's macroadenoma, it can cause visual field abnormalities, okay, by having uh, partial blindness. It can also be associated with an increase in the intracranial pressure, with headache, nausea, and vomiting. And in rare occasions, which sometimes we would encounter this one in autopsy cases, in CPCs, uh, the presence of a sudden enlargement of the pituitary gland of the pituitary adenoma caused by hemorrhage within it and this can cause the death of our patients and this is a neurosurgical emergency this is what we call as the pituitary apoplexy okay so histologically we, we would see the presence of lobulated clusters of the cells uh, we have a monotonous population of cell, okay? So we have monotonous population of cells. Uh, we have round dark nucleus, moderate cytoplasm, okay? So try to differentiate this one from the parathyroid hyperplasia. Okay? In parathyroid hyperplasia, it is more uniform than this one, wherein you have the clear cell, uh, clear cytoplasm here you can see the presence of some granularity um, and then you would see some mild nuclear polymorphism okay next I think I broke the glass okay okay next is 164 uh, this is diffuse hyperplasia of the adrenal gland okay so uh, this is seen in patients with ACTH dependent Cushing syndrome okay and uh, there would be enlargement of uh, both glands it is uh, composed of cells that would mimic the zona fasciculata okay it means that they are lipid rich and some cells would be composed of cells that would mimic the zona reticularis okay so if we're going to look at the cells so the cells are plump they are seen forming some trabecular sheets notice the presence of some vesicles Okay, so this would refer to the lipid component present within the cell. Okay. So, hyperplasia of the adrenal gland would be associated with Cushing syndrome, that is ACTH uh, dependent. So, manifestations of our patient, they have obesity, uh, the uh, buffalo humps because of the increase. Uh, fat content within the shoulder area, moon fasci, decreased libido, hypertension, so and so forth. Kindly view them in the tabulation in the book. Okay, so how do we diagnose patients with, uh, with uh, hyperplasia with Cushing syndrome? Uh, we look into the cortisol levels, it is increased. 24 hour level and the there's no diurnal variation for cortisol it means that the peak and the troll level if you remember my this uh, our discussion during the first lecture of clean path there should be a diurnal variation which would refer to the peak and the troll level the peak would be uh, seen 
at 4 to 6 in the morning and that is 50% of the troll level higher uh, which we would see or get at around 8 p.m. to 12 midnight okay so when we look at the peak and the troll levels they are the same for those with uh, Cushing syndrome okay so next slide is 165 this is adrenocortical adenoma and in adrenocortical adenoma uh, this is a neoplasm that would show encapsulation. So it's encapsulated and to differentiate it from adrenal hyperplasia, the hyperplasia doesn't have any uh, large nodule, although we also have a macronodular and micronodular hyperplasias, but there are numerous nodules. In this case, there's only one nodule, it's encapsulated, and it is ACTH independent okay so it means that the adjacent adrenal cortex and uh, the contralateral adrenal gland would be atrophic okay so histologically uh, they would mimic the uh, cells from the zona fasciculata in the sense that they are plump uh, they have they are seen forming trabecular sheets separated by the sinuses uh, they have uniform round dark nucleus with granular cytoplasm okay. and sometimes you would encounter uh, mild nuclear polymorphism like this one okay. like this one so mild nuclear polymorphism although uh, this one would be uh, correlated with the size of the entire cell so you have a small cell here small nucleus large nucleus large cell okay so this is uh, adrenocortical adenoma okay adrenocortical adenoma i'll, I'll just uh, go around so that you would be accustomed to it here, you would sometimes see the presence of mild polymorphism. This can be moderate nuclear polymorphism. Okay. Uh, this one is still uh, adenocortical adenoma. Okay. So take note of the, the appearance of the nuclei. They are not that bizarre looking. Okay. You have to check also uh, the rest of the slides if there's a presence of mitosis and necrosis okay so our last slide is slide 167 and this is This is adrenocortical carcinoma. Okay, so it's also ACTH independent, like adrenocortical adenoma. In it is not encapsulated, so it can have infiltrating borders, and then in this particular area alone, you can already identify there's the cells some of the cells are very very big okay so some of the cells are very very big okay they're very dark nuclei very polymorphic and then we can have irregular chromatin pattern irregular appearance of the nucleus like this one it's like a boomerang here you have irregular nuclear borders and then some areas you have areas of hemorrhage and then here you have areas of 
necrosis okay, in this case you have irregular nuclear membrane okay, by nucleation in this case okay, so I'll just look into the other areas you have here necrosis hemorrhage Okay, hair, uh, hemorrhage necrosis okay, which would be one of the differentiating feature from uh, adrenocortical adenoma and even hyperplasia of the adrenal gland okay so those are the slides that we have today kindly stay safe and good night